Hi everyone on the Elite Medical Prep YouTube channel. This is Victoria and today we are talking about how residency programs rank applicants. So recently, about a week, two weeks ago now, time's going fast for me, um, applicants got back the match 2021 results. So we have a lot of people that are super happy, got into some amazing programs. And then there's some people who didn't, but either way, people have been wondering for some time now, how is it that programs actually rank the people that have done interviews and applied? So we're gonna talk about that today. We are gonna call up Michael Zobel, wonderful elite medical prep tutor. Um, so let's call him. Hi, Michael, how are you doing today? Hi, Victoria, great to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. We're definitely excited to have you back on the Elite Medical Prep YouTube channel. What's been up since the last interview? Oh, you know, glad to be back. It's uh, it's turning into a very nice spring. I'm in the middle of fellowship interviews myself. And so I think our topic for today is completely appropriate. Awesome. Absolutely. So we'll get right into it then. Today, again, we're talking about how do residency applicants get ranked by programs. So the first question that we actually have that we were asked is, what is the difference between getting an interview and being ranked? That's a great question. So, you know, uh, residency programs will review all of the applications that they receive on an annual basis, and they will extend a certain number of interviews to those candidates. Now, in general, most residency programs will rank uh, as many applicants as they interview unless they have a particularly negative interaction uh, with an interviewee. So in general, getting an interview does not guarantee that you will be ranked, although one can hope that if the day goes as well as can be, uh, that you, you do end up on that list. Awesome. Okay, so the next question that we have are, what are the top factors that are usually considered in ranking candidates? So you've already done your interview, now what are program directors looking at? Yeah, it's, a, it's also, you know, just such an important question and one that actually the NRMP has done a lot of the legwork for us in terms of trying to figure out uh, actually what program directors are looking at. So there was a survey that was done, the results of which are available to us. And uh, not surprisingly, some of the most important things that go into a decision about an applicant are uh, your USMLE scores. So I know that that can induce a lot of anxiety and stress for applicants, especially given that those tests are done at the time that you're interviewing. But for those of you who are watching this blog post before you've taken the exam, just another reminder of how important it is to do really, really well uh, on those tests. Absolutely. So that leads us kind of into our next question. And that is, how important are scores and grades? That's something that we see again and again, especially on some of the online forms. There seems to be a little bit confusion about how important are your USMLE scores or COMLEX scores in actually getting that interview. And then how is that factored into ranking? Yeah, so I think that the way you, you bring it up is absolutely right. There is a difference between being on a list to get in the door, so to speak, for an interview and actually being you know, ranked on a list and where you might fall on that for a program. So grades and USMLE scores are so important, particularly for securing that interview. There are many programs who have a minimum score below which they will not extend an interview to an applicant, no matter how wonderful or interesting their story may be. So I think that that really does play a big role. But even when it comes to actually making the rank list, despite knowing that everybody that they're interviewing falls above a certain threshold mm -hmm. in terms of a USMLE score, that still comes into play. And the real importance of all of this is not that residency programs are necessarily looking for the, the highest possible scores you know, that they can get from an applicant, but really because that is a predictor of those applicants who are going to go on to pass their general surgery or other residency related boards. And so it's important that, that they know that a person who comes in is gonna be able to crush that threshold as well. Absolutely. Um, so the final question that we have here is, do you have any tips for positive faculty interaction? Something we're gonna display kind of on this post as we're going through is actually the graphs from the NRMP match. And that's one of the things that's ranked super, super highly in the factors that are gonna see if you get on that rank list. So do you have any tips from your experience? What can people do to make sure that they have positive faculty interactions? Yeah, the interview day is an interview days. In some cases, they're one or two days. That is such an important time. I mean, this is really 
uh, when an, a, a program is really having an opportunity to get to know an applicant on a personal level. You know, there are certain numbers and features that are really, you know, sort of pretty uniform across a bunch of different applicants. But really getting to know you and what makes you tick and what makes you special is something that a lot of programs will really emphasize. And I think the NRMP survey results reflect that. So when it comes to preparing for the interview day, one, you've got to do your homework. You have to know who you're interviewing right. with. It's your responsibility as an applicant to look up that person, find out what, what, what they enjoy research-wise, what their background is, so that you can have a meaningful and engaging conversation. And when you get into a room with some of these uh, you know, providers or physicians, there may be awkward interactions, and it's your job to really carry that conversation as an applicant. And I think what what that ends up doing is as the interviewer ends the interview and reflects back to take their notes, they'll really recall a very comfortable, easy conversation. And that's only going to help you when it comes to making their list. Right. And how, how can people in that interview process avoid making that feel forced? Because I think right. that sometimes something that happens is that you get into a situation, you really, really want to impress your interviewers and you just do a little too much. And then it comes across as like, eh, you know, just, yep. just those, those overly out are, there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So in order to avoid that cringe uh, moment, the most important thing is to practice. So yeah. You know, the more interactions and more interviews you have, the better you'll get. But you don't want to just rely on the process to train you. You want to be hitting the ground running with your first interview. So I would advise that uh, applicants not only speak with faculty members that they may have uh, close relationships with in medical school, but friends, family, whoever you can get on the phone, in person, however, it is, to do an interview and just practice talking about yourself. Practice not only sharing the specialness of your story and the things that interest you, but, but practice integrating things about your application that may make you unique. Practice bringing in your research interests, your clinical interests, what got you to medical school to begin with. And the more you practice, the more authentic it will feel and the more authentic it will sound. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for all this wonderful insight. We will let you go. We'll stop it here. Definitely, we look forward to getting you back on the channel for more interviews. Uh, definitely a fan favorite. So thank you so much and you have a wonderful rest of your day. It's a pleasure to be here. Good luck to everyone out there. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. And that is all the time that we have for today. A huge thank you to Michael Zobel for being willing to get on camera, do a little interview with us, answer the questions that you all may have. Um, stay tuned until next time and thanks again for watching.